Hey guys, Dr. Chapman here from SI Institute here in Arizona. Hey, listen, I got a 20 minute little video here. Click on the link below if you're interested in how to build a multi-million dollar practice. It's not coming from a place of, well, I think this would work. Nope, not at all. It is working right here in Arizona in our faculty practice. Everything we teach here at the Institute is implemented into our faculty practice and the shit works. Okay, so forget all the gurus are saying, hey, how to do this, but they don't do it themselves. We here at SI, we do, we teach, and we do exactly what we teach you and it's successful all the time. So what you need to do is click on the link below, check out my video, and I will break down what full mouth options are, are available for your patients, how to incorporate it in your general practice, how to kind of manage things. I break it down a little simple. Hope you enjoyed the tip. Hey guys, this is Dr. Chap from FMSI, and this video is about how to build a multi-million dollar practice. Catch your attention, everybody wants to know that. How do you build a multi-million dollar practice? Not a million dollar practice, not a two million dollar practice, but a multi-million dollar practice. And a lot of doctors have asked me that question all the time. So I wanted to go through some suggestions that I actually do to help build a multi-million dollar practice. You know, the first thing that I always look at is you want to break things down a little bit. Okay, uh, on this chalkboard, I have some things written down. I'm gonna go through it a little bit as far as the center part is your practice. Okay, and we're gonna talk about two sides of your practice. Marketing, business consultants, do you need them? Okay, where do I get training at? There's a lot of things and how do you kind of break it down to make shit easy? Okay, so I like to, anybody that knows me and come to the institute and teach, I like to make shit easy because life is easy. You just gotta have a direction, a plan, a pathway, okay? So for example, business consultants. Guys, you guys are getting tackled. Everybody who's watching this is, tech, is tackled by a marketing company. Hey, listen, we'll, we'll build a $2 million practice and we'll market your, your, market your practice and we'll, we'll, we'll get each lead generation. Okay, well, if you're gonna do that, what is, your, what is the products you have to sell? Are you trained to do it proficiently? Guys that have done one or two implants, you're not ready for a lot of the bigger cases yet. So if you start marketing implants, you're gonna get a whole shit ton of stuff coming to your office, and you gotta clinically be prepared to do so. But not just clinically, you gotta be able to have the process to be able to close the deals and actually to perform the, the surgery, as well as close the case financially, okay? You gotta achieve what makes sense for function to your patient, what makes sense for financial to your patient, to come down with alternative choices so your patients have options and choose the best thing that's according for them, okay? A lot of people ask me, okay, if I have a business consultant that approaches me, what is the things that are important to you, Dr. C? Well, I'm gonna tell you. I had a business consultant that uh, approached me. He's like, dude, I, I wanna teach you how to be a dental CEO. Okay. Once he, he didn't ask me any questions about it, but then I started asking questions to him. I'm like, okay, well, how can you help me? What have you done in your life you know, that I need to trust you to be able to build mine? You know, and he was like, well, you know, I mean, I'm a, I'm a dental consultant. And I was like, great, well, but what have you done? He goes, well, I've run, a, I've run some practices. I'm like, what's the biggest practice you've run? He's like, well, you know, I mean, about a million dollars. I said, I do $6 million a year. Have you ever run a $6 million a year practice? The answer is no. Do I wanna hire this guy as my business consultant to teach me how to be a dental CEO when he hasn't done it himself? Hmm, gee. Or when I find business consultants that have really good theories and stuff, and I hear that they have practices that they can actually implement their own systems within that practice. Hmm. Or I'm gonna go take some implant courses, but the guys that are teaching it have never done it themselves or have successful practices. There's a problem there. Here at SI, we teach what we, what we preach and we actually do all day long the procedures that we teach. We have a faculty office, and yes, our faculty office does $6 million plus. And it's growing. And we've started there four years ago, guys. So how do we do it? Okay. Now, a lot of the practices on the market that are hitting those goals, you know, and you can hit higher than that. Okay. We're just starting out, but it's still pretty respectable. A lot of students will say, well, don't you have to just, just do one thing to be able to hit that? No. Okay. And so they have practices that are trying to model on clear choice and things like that when they sell one product. My thing that I like to do, if you look at the board behind me, you have your practice, okay? Your practice 
itself. Forget all the procedures I'm running down, just focus on the practice. The first thing I do is I'll look at, is your business ratios of your practice healthy? Now, anybody who doesn't know that, you may wanna go over your P&Ls to make sure all your ratios from rent to staff and all that stuff is a healthy and healthy spot. There's a lot of consultants that try to drive that ratio down so low that they actually compromise the quality of care by choosing cheaper labs, but they also don't market, so they're never really gonna grow. And so what you see is you see a lot of these practices maintaining a certain stature all their existence. It's been 700 grand for the last 20 years. Now, we're business guys too. We wanna to grow our business. Otherwise, what are we doing, okay? So the first thing is I want you to guys to look at your practice, look at your business ratios. I wanna look at your operational components into your practice and, and look at your sales process, okay? How the Jungle Cruise goes down, how your uh, presentations happen, how is your communication, and those are three things as a practice I would look at. Side branch over here says GP office, all procedures and simple implant placement. So the guys that are coming to our class, a lot of them are really seasoned. We have the young guys that's like, well, how do I implement implants in my practice? I kind of do simple procedures. So if you have a, one aspect of this is your general practice. This is the category where you have your hygiene program, you're doing crowns, fillings, uh, extractions, root canals, but you're also adding the implants. When you start learning implants, that's where you're adding it to. Simple stuff, because a lot of times you take these classes that you're not really ready for the advanced stuff. So, this is where I categorize. If you concentrate on just adding implants to your general practice, you can rise this category, probably I'd say about its $2 million region. Two mil. So if you market simple implants, add extractions, grafting, and implant placement to this. I also, over here, will be talking about full mouth categories. But some of these, like overdentures, that can be placed in your GP office, okay? So this is, basically general dentistry with probably some overdentures and things like that. Yeah, you can do a very, very successful life and we've got to market that in order to accent. But well, here's the, here's the dilemma. When you start marketing simple implant placement, you start attracting a lot of advanced prosthodontic patients. These patients are gonna be losing their teeth. The patients, well, a lot of them actually are not losing their teeth but their bites are really overclosed, they're ground down, they need to be opened up, they need crown work, they need some implants too. Then you have those categories of the patients losing all their teeth, okay? So what I always wanna make sure my young students understand is once you're getting into a simple implant placement, you're gonna be attracting a lot of stuff. So start learning the other journey, okay? And that can help you grow your practice. So I like that this is your general. So over here, you guys can see, is a list of products, okay? I call them products, it's not a big deal. It's like a menu or products. So the products of full mouth reconstruction. So you guys, let's take a step back. You can see a lot on the internet going, how to be a full mouth master, how to master full mouth. And then the only thing you see is them talking about hybrids of the all-in-one floor. Okay, let's break that down. Full mouth reconstruction is broken into two categories. You got keep people keeping their teeth, Okay, that need full mouth. Now, if you're keeping your teeth, you're doing crowns, maybe partials, but you're doing the whole mouth at one shot. You have cases that are full mouth that you're not opening your bite, okay? And you're doing some implants and crowns, okay? Your other case type is full mouth reconstruction where you're opening the bite. Those people that you're keeping the teeth will fall in one of these two categories. And there are people coming in that need a whole crap ton of work done and they fall into these two categories. All right, so a lot of my students don't really understand the category, so I like to make things simple. So, no opening bite patient, vertical's good, you know, you got room for stuff, you know, not a probably a hard case to do if you know how to design and, and know the process of doing these kind of cases. So this whole list I've broken down are all the full mouth procedures that are in dentistry, okay? So number one is full mouth with no opening bite. Full, number two is full mouth with opening bite. Now why are these cases important financially? Well, this case is usually about 25 gram per arch, which is a total of 50. These kind of cases are about, with opening bite, it's about 56,000. Oof, well, those are big tickets, right? Okay, so now let's go into the other category of full mouth, patients losing all their teeth, okay? The third category of full mouth is overdentures. People are like, that's not full mouth. Yeah, it is. 
We're dealing with your entire jaw positioning. You're losing your teeth. We just have, happen to select implants with an overdenture prosthetic, which is our removable prosthetic. Now look at the look at the financial benefits here too. So we have locators. Locators are meant for mild to moderate bone loss. We have a category called bars with overdentures that are meant for severe bone loss. No. Don't, don't, don't sugarcoat this. This category three is pretty profitable for a practice. $16,000 in arcs for a locator. So if you're pulling the teeth, doing four implants with a locator bar overdenture, it's about 16 grand or 32 for your entire mouth. Oof. If you're doing bars, hater bars, top and bottom with four implants, you're probably looking at about 20 per arch or 40 grand. So category three is very, very profitable in full mouth dentistry. So when you start thinking about full mouth, you're doing the whole thing at one shot. And it's definitely full mouth, wouldn't you agree? But we have categories. Locators are good for mild to moderate bone. Bars are good for severe patients with a lot of bone loss, okay? So fourth category is your hybrid dentures. You're all on four, teeth in a day. Good category. And then the red, you'll see that it's called severe. The red is for severe bone loss. Now this category is excellent for severe bone loss patients. It's about 30 per arch around the country or total of 60,000. I've seen it as low as 25 grand per arch. And a lot of people, you know, play around with that number, but you know, 25 to 30 per arch is a pretty uh, uh, healthy, uh, uh, you know, selection from a financial point of view to do good quality dentistry. So section four is excellent hybrid dentures. Now hybrid dentures is a semi-fixed prosthetic. Why is it semi-fixed? Let's take it out once a year. Now, most of the guys doing hybrid dentures, they do the one that looks like a denture, because it's a really expensive denture. The cost of that for a patient can get a little bit pricey as they knock out teeth over time. Uh, you can get other different upgraded forms, but this gives you the fourth category of full mouth denture. So you see a lot of guys really focusing on this. Now, this hybrid denture stuff all in four, you can do the Nobel technique, you can go into zygomatics, pterygoids, all of those other kind of crazy implants that you see a lot of those advanced doctors do, which quite frankly, they're doing some amazing, amazing shit. But this is a category that you see a lot of practices focusing on. Now, the fifth category of full mouth is bridges. Bridges were designed to be FP1, 2, and 3. Mild, moderate, severe. We have three categories depending on the amount of severity of bone loss. These are about 35 grand in art, so a little more expensive than four, 70,000 for a full entire case. So you look at, I like five categories for my full mouth section and as you can see they're all really really lucrative and these are all options that our clients have so if you're a, a, a client that's losing all their teeth we well, have some overdenture locator options if you're a mild to moderate severe bone or you can go into the uh, fb1 category if you got severe bone loss then you're probably looking at a bar overdenture or you're looking at a hybrid so i'm trying to break things down easier for you guys but i wanted to go through that real quickly so you can see how vast full mouth reconstruction is. And to do any of these kind of cases, you gotta learn a couple things. You gotta learn repositioning, you gotta learn design, maintaining that new position, and designing your case so you know where to put your implants, you know how to temporize your prosthetics. Even in this category where you're doing full mouth, you need to know how to sometimes open the bite, you also need to know how to temporize. So it's all about design, temporization, then going into completion. So once you start learning those pathways, these selections are alternative choices for your clients. Now, if you're wanting to build a $6 million practice, what I suggest is you get into implants, you start learning restorative training, which is the number one thing you gotta learn before you do an implant placement. Focus your practice here. Start adding your implants over here. Start cherry picking these things once you get trained. Start putting overdentures into this category, okay? And when you start learning these procedures, your, your whole basket of tricks is gonna open. Now, up here, NP, new patients. You've gotta drive that number up, and that's from marketing. And marketing is an easy way to grab fee-for-service patients. Most doctors don't market, so most doctors are not going after them. And I'm gonna tell you guys that listen to this video, there are so many clients that are needing your services, and they're needing a lot of these choices. This side, as far as your, your, your patient population goes, is increasing the need, okay? You've got a lot of complex cases coming to your office, especially when you start the market. But you can build $2 million right here. You keep this thing rolling. 
what I would do is I would start marketing your implants and things that attract implant patients in. And then once you have all this stuff down, you're able to do some really cool dentistry and this side, even five cases a month of any of these price tickets can really raise a bar in your practice. And if you reach your GP office to 2 million, you add five cases at, you know, 40,000 a pop, even if it's a denture bar or 30 grand a pop for a full mouth, you're talking about another 150, $200,000 like that. But you don't wanna just jump into this before you're ready. Start your journeys, and then start getting you know, your learning process from, this is all based on restorative dentistry, okay? So as I just wanted to convey in this video, placing the screw is pretty freaking easy. What patients judge you on is what goes on top. What, everybody is different. There's not one case you make everybody the same. So when you guys are looking at this, what I'm talking, number four, that's what a lot of guys go for. Everything's a hybrid denture, right? Well, look what they're missing. They're taking cases that can be restored and jumping down to full mouth as hybrids. So there's a lot of practice and I want to tell my students, the guys are watching this video, you will become way more lucrative when you have options and alternatives for your clients instead of becoming a practice that you say that you're full mouth, but you only offer one selection. And as you can see, there's five selections and you're only offer number four because you're gonna have patients that come in that are not good for four, but are good for five, or they're good for four in a bar, or good for bridges in an overdenture, or maybe, hell, if you know how to open the body, you can save a lot of these teeth, and these are good price tickets, but it's about being conservative, offering choices to your clients, and as this expands in your repertoire and you're able to do these things, the more focused you are on restorative dentistry, the better your implants are gonna be placed, the more long-term they're gonna be successful, and implants are just screws and bone. I would also suggest that stay in your lane. So once you start mastering this stuff, even if you don't, if you wanna keep your practice simple and just do simple implant placement, learning the restorative reconstruction components of advanced prosthodontics will actually give you an edge as well, because you can now team up if you want to with a specialist, and now you know how to design the case, set up the case, and actually communicate really effectively with your specialist. Your specialist will appreciate you because you know what you're doing, even if you're not doing the implants. And because when you're doing hybrids, there's certain places you need. When you're doing dentures, there's other certain, you put implants in certain positions. When you're doing bridges, you're doing them in teeth locations, okay? A lot of hybrids are flat plate on flat. Bridges are profiling out of your gums. So each of these components have different restorative needs, different placement needs, and if the more you are have a background in that, the better off your journey with implant placement is gonna be. But my tip basically is how to build for, uh, over a $6 million office. Well, here at SI, we're doing it right now. We do as we teach and we preach as we do. So if you wanna come and learn from a, uh, an institute that is actively doing it, it's not, oh, well, I can build a $6 million. No, we're doing it, we're doing it right now. Okay, I think this year we're gonna hit seven. Now it's not about anybody who knows me, it's not about the money. It's about good ethic articles, conservative treatments, patients are happy about giving them alternate choices that fit their function, fit their financials, and fits their lifestyle so they can actually really want to buy your products, okay? So anyway, this is Dr. Chaffin closing out. Have a great week, hopefully that helped. Take care.